One of the most tense moments for a military pilot is in-flight refueling. Thanks to training this same maneuver for years, the process is highly automated and can even seem simple. But all pilots will tell you that their first times were very tense. Especially considering that there have been several air accidents because of this. From Europe, Airbus is developing a system that seems from the future. Focusing on what air conflicts will be like in several decades where there will be many drones and fighter planes flying at the same time. Currently, there are two ways to refuel in flight, with the boom method or with the hose and drogue method. We already explained the differences between these two methods in the previous video. Why would a plane use one system over the other? The first one is already in the process of being automated. This is something that both Airbus and Boeing have been pursuing for a few years now. Several NATO countries have planes that are purely tankers, including the KC-10, KC-135, KC-46, and A330. MRTT. And then, in addition to these, there are other planes that can also perform the task of in-flight refueling, such as the A400-1000 or the 1000C-130. These planes, originally designed for other purposes, have been modified to perform in-flight refueling. Moreover, they use propellers, putting them in a different league from the other four from the start. The United States Air Force uses three models, including the KC-10, which is derived from the iconic Douglas Commercial 10. The KC-135 is based on the Boeing 707, while the KC-46 is derived from a Boeing 767. The A330 MRTT is derived from the A330. The KC-135, on the other hand, is a very old plane that had its first flight. In 1956, the KC-10 is also very old, flying for the first time in 1980. So at the beginning of this century, the United States needed another tanker plane to start replacing its older models. In addition, Airbus at the beginning of the century released the A330MRTT, a plane that suddenly began to take away the United States' sales of tanker planes to its allied countries. That's how Boeing designed the KC-46, could we say that? The A330MRTT and the KC-46 are the competition. In a future video, we could talk about which of these two planes is better, but that's not the topic for today. In the previous video, we explained the boom operator's role and mentioned that Boeing and Airbus are automating it. In old planes, such as the KC-135, the boom operator lies down at the rear of the aircraft. In the KC-46, which is more modern, the boom operator manipulates it with a fly-by-wire system from the front of the plane who is seated just before the cockpit. However, in the A330M RTT, the operator is inside the cockpit right behind the pilots. But from the moment it is done with a fly-by-wire system, the process could be automated to not depend on a person. For those who don't know, fly-by-wire means that a person with the controls gives instructions to a computer. And the computer, considering all flight conditions, it will manipulate the control surfaces so that the person's orders translate into the desired movement. Modern fighter planes operate in this manner, with the computer situated between the pilot and the control surfaces. So for tasks that are not overly complicated, automating the process is simply taking one small step further. In the case of in-flight refueling, the receiving aircraft should approach to a certain distance. And at that moment, the tanker's computer could make the contact and start passing the fuel automatically. Okay, so I just need to slowly drive forward, not scare anybody. As seen in the previous video, for this to occur, all the receiving plane's information must be in the tanker plane's database. Refueling an F-16, a highly maneuverable plane, is very different from a C-5 Galaxy, a large aircraft that moves less during the process. This idea of doing automatic in-flight refueling with the boom is known as automatic air-to-air -air refueling and is simplified to A3R because there are three A's. Currently, it seems Boeing does not have this system certified for refueling any aircraft. However, Airbus does have it certified for refueling from an A330 to another A330, MRTT to an F-16. In 2024, it's expected to be certified for F-15S2. That's right, under ideal conditions with good weather and during the day. In November 2023, Airbus invited me to witness some trials, which we will discuss now. But before we start, we saw a small timeline of the plans the company has. First, they are going to automate the boom with more planes and especially during night flights and in bad weather conditions. Then the idea is also to automate the hose and drogue system. But something here confused me. I have a question about the A3R for the hose and drogue system because if I understood correctly, 
It's a passive system for the MRTT, so it's the pilot of the plane that's going to refuel who has to get to the position. Is that correct? The idea with the Holstein rug is that the passive can become active, can make it active, and this is the challenge. We believe this is the step we need to build upon. Did you just hear Maria Angelis Marti, head of tankers and derivatives at Airbus? And I don't know if you're aware of what she just said. In the last video, we learned that the probe and drogue system was passive for the tanker plane. That's why I was surprised by the desire to automate this system from the A330 MRTT's perspective. Since currently the main work comes from the receiving aircraft, as it has to hook the drogue. Well, her. What it suggests in this video is that somehow the passive system can be converted into an active system for the tanker aircraft. MRTT will be able to take control over the aircraft that are going to refuel even being several kilometers away to bring them closer in an orderly manner and make them refuel in the best order. But be careful. It's not about taking control over the drone by telling it where to go, but rather taking direct control over its control systems, moving its aerodynamic surfaces like ailerons or flaps. In the future, a scenario is predicted with multiple 5th and 6th generation aircraft in flight. These planes will be in continuous communication with each other, and not only are they manned aircraft, but the possibility of drones is also being considered. The tanker plane's mission is to keep an updated status of each plane it is refueling. How much fuel do they have left if there are potential enemies nearby? And with all that information, they could organize, through artificial intelligence, a refueling sequence ordering all the aircraft in the optimal way. For us, it might make sense to refuel the aircraft with the least amount of fuel first. But maybe, if we could take all the variables into account, the order would be different. That's what the A330M RTT's artificial intelligence will do. The most amazing thing is that this technology is being developed entirely in Spain thanks to the Airbus Upnext team who are responsible for developing future technologies. November 21st, 2023. They put it into practice with a second successful flight in which several drones were tested at once, a moment that there are no misunderstandings. These are not the drones that are expected to be used in the future, they are simply ones that Airbus uses for testing. In fact, no existing drones, including these, can refuel mid-air. But with the test they were doing that day, they just wanted to test the idea of taking control over the drones and positioning them correctly. The sequence was as follows. They took an A341 yards, RTT, to fly from Getafe and took it to the south of Spain to Huelva. That's where I was, where the drones would take off later. This is because this test needed to be done over the sea. Once airborne, the tanker plane controlled them to bring them closer for refueling. For safety reasons, what they did was create a virtual A341 yards RTT, a few meters behind the real A341 yards RTT. To the software, it appeared as if another plane was right behind. Moreover, they created two fake drones which flew simultaneously at one point. The real A310 behind the fictitious A310 followed by three real drones and two fictitious drones. The idea of creating two fictitious drones was to test what would happen if two of them were to collide. Thus, they could test it with one real and one fictitious. To see the software, how would it react? Obviously, the computer was programmed to avoid at all costs that they could collide and separate them in case this happened. But this needs to be tested. The safety measure works in the following way. All planes have a safety sphere around them, and if one plane gets on another sphere, the computer should reposition them to continue respecting the safety distances. The good thing about a computer handling all the planes at once is that in case several planes are flying nearby, they could all be moved at the same time to ensure that the safety distance is still maintained with everyone. Because if a plane pilot were to collide with a plane on his right, what he would do is simply turn to the left. However, if another plane was on the left, an accident could happen. But if there is a computer that takes all of this into account and is the one manipulating everyone at the same time, it could move everyone equally and in this way there would be no problem. It's important to make clear that everything they tested that day was successful. When I first heard about this idea, all I could think about was the possibility of an enemy hacker getting in the middle of the commands and taking control over the plane that was going to refuel. Considering that the idea is to use it with fighter planes, we would be talking about a very serious problem. How do you guarantee that the plane cannot be hacked? You know, yes, someone can take control. Could a remote be hacked? That isn't clear. Okay, so we have a system that has a unique identification. The communication between the MRTT and the drone has a unique identification. If that unique identification is broken, we would understand that there is someone who wants to hack the drone and we could make a safe return of the drone to the drone's own ground station. 
In fact, the idea of remotely controlling military aircraft is not at all new. Drones have been used for many years. The United States, for example, operates the famous Global Hawk or the Predators. Even Ukraine, we know, has been using drones. Is it going to act against Russian positions during the conflict? So the risk of an enemy taking control has existed for many years. Another thing that might concern us is that some electronic warfare tactics could be used to generate interference and make this maneuver impossible. For those unfamiliar with war, this may seem like a movie scene, but it happens every day. In modern warfare, certain aircraft are tasked with conducting electronic warfare operations. Airbus, having made the idea of the A4R public, puts a lot of pressure on other tanker aircraft manufacturers such as Boeing, which is still in the process of certifying the A3R. This is because any country that has future plans to be an air power will have to be thinking now about how to operate its fleet of 5th and 6th generation aircraft. And under these circumstances, a tanker aircraft with the ability to perform the A4R would be superior to any other option. Keep in mind that this is still being investigated. It will be many years before it can be used with all aircraft types. In fact, the A3R still needs to be perfected so that it can be used with more receiver aircraft. Realistically, Airbus needs to certify the A330 MRTT for aircraft that potential buyer countries might have. Certifying it for the F-22 Raptor or B-2 Spirit would be senseless as they are exclusively American aircraft. On the other hand, I am very convinced that the next plane to be certified for the A3R will be the F-30. 